Hello, everybody. You ever go online? That's where we are right now. We're online, a vast network of interconnected computers. It's worldwide, if you if you believe the hype. I'm going to be your host for this. Uh, it's a little Corner Gas uh, reunion. We got, uh, I don't want to tip anything, but we have the whole cast here. In theory, I could have held that information back and sprung it on you. But who are we kidding? You know what we're doing. We're all here. It's a Corner Gas uh, reunion. It's kind of a, a lead up to the, uh, the premiere of uh, season three, Corner Gas Animated, which premieres on CTV Comedy October 12th. So check your local uh, listing, your guide, whatever it is, because it's a giant country. You ever uh, see how big Canada is? It's hard to see all at once because it's so vast. Even if you stood on the hood of your truck, you still can't see the whole country. You're doing a lot of good by participating here because we're uh, raising money for a food bank. Food banks across Canada. So it was you can support your local food bank by uh, participating here, donating while you're here. If you're able to, please uh, make a donation. The link is going to be in the description below. And um, we here at Corner Gas Animated are going to match the donations. So th this is a fantastic way to help out your local food bank while having uh, what I hope is going to be a good time uh, listening to everybody uh, ramble here and shoot the breeze about Corner Gas remembrances and current uh, uh, thoughts about recording the animated show and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to bring people in. Gallery hey! view. <laughs> One, two, three, four, now? five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Lauren's <laughs> four by three aspect ratio. I don't know. It's, it's, it's 1996 where Lauren is uh, recording from. <laughs> Yep. You look you look the same as you were in 1996. <laughs> Finally, after at long last, we were able to get everybody together. That went way honestly, that went a lot smoother than I thought it would. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just go around. We'll start at the top left there, Gabe. How are things? Things are great. <laughs> you're, you're back in Vancouver, Canada? Yes, we're back hey! in Vancouver. And my little boy just um, started eighth grade, which here in BC means high school. So that's kind of a big deal in our house and uh, things are going well. Who's that uh, strapping young fella there? He doesn't have his hat okay. on backwards. Who is he? Oh yeah, should I? Does it matter? I, <laughs> it I kind of lost. looks good. What do you got on the go there? What are you drinking? Oh, a cup of tea. Nice right. cup of tea. And Eric, we only got to chat briefly. We, now you're not at home now, are you? You're, you're away from home at the moment. I'm not sure where I am. <laughs> I am. I am in Halifax. I'm in Halifax uh, <laughs> right now. As we speak, we're in Halifax. Kareem is there, but you guys are, or you're both in Nova Scotia, but you're not in the same place working on the same thing. Right. Where I am, I'm down in Hubbard. Lauren, where in the world are you? I'm back home in Squamish. For those unfamiliar with Squamish, when you drive into the Squamish, that the giant rock that everybody climbs, that is impressive to look at when you come into town. You ever climbed that thing? Uh, just walked around it. Uh, I have no <laughs> desire or need to climb the face of it. <laughs> uh, call me crazy. I don't, I don't understand how people, because that is, it's about as vertical yeah. as it gets. Yeah, right? yeah, it's insane. Tara, yeah, where, where are you there? What do you got on the go, some rosé? <laughs> You got a little Sunday morning rosé? First of all, it's one o'clock in the afternoon. I'm in Toronto. Oh, that's it's right. It's water with a splash of cranberry juice. You tell yourself whatever you Fancy think you will believe. Do you have a bladder infection? <laughs> no, it's a splash of cranberry juice because I'm trying to drink more water and I just find water very boring. Oh, poor, poor water. We need it to live. How can it be boring? It's the most essential I, element. I get that, but I just, I, to drink it throughout the day, I feel like I need to dress it up. Uh, is that why the band Earth, Wind, and Fire left water out? <laughs> it was too boring? And Nancy, where, let the folks know where, uh, where on earth you are located right now. In the den. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that clears that up for any of those wondering. The den? The den. The point is we're, we're raising money here. We're not just getting together and chatting and promoting uh, the, the premiere of Corner Gas Animated Season 3 premieres October 12th. Are you telling all your friends? Yes. Posting. Yes. Posting. Yes. Associates and family members? Absolutely. Family members, yes. My mom knew before I did. Accosting strangers on the street and letting them know about it? Absolutely. 
from a great social distance on the other hand. Well, let's not turn this into a political thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. I love that right. science got political at some point in the world. I know. When did that happen? How did that happen? I know. Listen, let's, let's not debate whether or not gravity exists, okay? And let's just... <laughs> So we're here to, uh, one of the things we're doing on this little uh, extravaganza that we're doing is uh, we're raising money for your local food bank. For oh, good. Uh, wherever Fantastic. you guys are, yeah. and wherever you out there are watching from, if you make a donation, the link is in the description below, donate to the food bank. We, over here at Corner Gas, Corner Gas Animated, are going to match your donation. Okay. That's so great. Fantastic. No, it's awesome. Talk a little bit about, uh, maybe Tara, we'll start with you because um, you guys, you and Lauren are in different parts of the, of the world. And so many of your scenes, Karen and Davis are together. Aren't you eating my muffins? I'm saving them to binge eat. Really? Why not binge eat one now? Okay. Mmm, can't wait. What's it like for you guys speaking remotely, waiting for the, just talk us through that process a little bit. Lauren? Uh, Tara. <laughs> I thought you froze up for a second. I was like, oh, technical glitch. <laughs> During a hair late. Um, I, I, I think it's interesting. The delay is something, something else, but also the, the staff mm -hmm. at Cosmic, where we are in Vancouver, do an incredible job of making me feel safe in the studio. So that's awesome. And then just dealing with the, there's very minimal delay, but you know, just trying to act off the silky tones of, uh, of Tara. I think we're really lucky that we get to do it the way that we do it so that we get to actually work off of each other and find comedy in moments that maybe we wouldn't have found if we were just in a room by ourselves just saying our lines. But I also feel like I know Lauren so well. <laughs> you can see this in your mind, eh? I kind of I know what you're going to say and how you're going to say it. Yeah. There have been times I've had to do it without you and I definitely have you in my head. Yeah. Right That's in my good. head. Good and bad, I guess. You're always in my head, Lauren. Mm. Always in my head. <laughs> now, Gabe, there were there were times when you were out of town that you had to do. You were recording from a kind of a set, a remote setup at home. What was that like? Yeah, that was the first time we did it. I was a little bit nervous because I really do love being um, close to you guys, and I thought, oh, is this going to feel different? But it was so nice because I could hear you, and we had the camera on Zoom, so I could see you and Anbot in the studio, and I think I could see Fred. I mean, it's really wild to be recording from a different location, but we it, it worked, right? I do prefer it when we get to be as much of us in a room together, because yeah. it feels like a radio play. It feels like we're doing an old-timey radio play, which I like. Tara touched on it, the fact that often animation, um, people go in separately, individually, and do their things. That's how it's often done. But for those who did, were unaware, prior to um, the, the world melting down, uh, the way we used to do it, because we, we enjoy, A, we enjoy getting together. I hope mm -hmm. I'm not just speaking for myself. Yeah, <laughs> we always enjoy getting together, but also there is a bit of chemistry that when we're all together, uh, I think we find comedy that doesn't exist um, when, when I think it's kind of the classic example of this, the, what is it, the sum being gr greater than the, uh, the whole being greater than the sum of the parts, right? That's kind of what I think we had with this show. So we actually, to the, to the extent we could, everybody would get together in the studio. I think that's made a difference with the show, don't you think? 100%. Okay. Absolutely. We've been doing this, you know, sometimes it hits me how long we've been together kicking around as a group doing this. Yeah, show. It's, it's nearly 20 it's years, crazy. isn't it? Well, let's talk a little bit about transitioning from live action, which we did for six seasons, 107 episodes. Maybe we'll start with you, Gabe, up there in the corner. When you first heard about us maybe doing this as an animated show, what were your thoughts? Well, I, I love the idea and I was excited because I, you know, the, we've all been together for so long so it was really nice to be able to continue those stories and I we've talked about this before but the really exciting thing about animation is the freedom that you guys have Brent to kind of create um, situations and stories that we wouldn't have been able to do in the live action situation right, right. Um, yeah 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 we can expand some of those you know fantasy sequences and dream sequences which were always a part of the show so it's kind of nice because we're staying within the wheelhouse of what we had always done creatively but it opens us up to you know have a unicorn fight a Sasquatch. You're thinking about which one would win in a fight, aren't you? It's too close to call. 
the fact that we're doing a cartoon is, is a bit of a dream come true for me. I wanted to do cartoon voices for a long time. That's why I did it. I wanted to make your dreams come true. Oh, bless <laughs> your heart. Bless your heart, sir. Thank you my, so much. My only the reason I get up in the morning. <laughs> During this time, the, the lockdown, what have you been doing to keep yourselves entertained? I know, Eric, you've been doing a lot of Nordic track. <laughs> uh, and I grew a cat. You grew oh, a cat. Oh, what a cat. What's the name? Yeah. What's Her name? Her name's Clar Clarice. Oh. Clarice. What oh. Fell into the lambs, Clarice. She likes yeah. to bite a little bit. Yeah. I was say. Do you talk to her like that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Clarice. <laughs> I'm in Hubbard's Nova Scotia right now. I've been here for almost, oh, just a little over two months. I love um, Hubbard's. I love Hubbard's. I've been there. I spent yeah, two seasons it's, it's there. Yeah, it's gorgeous. gorgeous. It's unbelievably beautiful here, without a mm. doubt. I am missing my husband very much and my animals. Yeah, and uh, you can't fly back and visit. It's not that easy to no. do now. Not that easy, no. Yeah. One of the things I want to do for the people watching uh, at home <coughs> is uh, just throw to some old clips of the uh, show. We, we got a lot of feedback when we did this episode. It was the Rock On episodes. Oh, and yeah. Our, our band that we had put together for this show, Thunderface. Oh, oh, here we go. Oh, my God. Look how young you look. And look at all the hair on my head. <laughs> Amazing. One, two, three, four. caught in a chainsaw. No, they don't. Well, they sound like some small animal caught in some kind of machinery. But this ain't no game. Drumming, don't you think? The drums, amateurish. I can't hear you, it's too loud. Well, at least the drumming's good. A bunch of babies up there. Look how like, young we all were. You know, we really should have pursued that and just become a band. Oh, like God, yeah. We're revisiting Thunderface in the animated version. There's going to be an episode coming up. Oh, you guys. Oh, Lordy, yeah. Lordy. oh I yeah. know another great thing about that episode was to spend the spend the day with uh, the Tragically Hip. That oh, was yes. probably one wow. of the best, yes, the best mm -hmm. moments. Sorry, kids, you're going to have to find somewhere else to practice. Come on, Brent. Me and the boys are working out the lyrics. Don't tell me what the poets are doing, just Amscray. Can I, this is a selfish moment. Can I, can I share a selfish moment yeah. about that day? Mm -hmm. And thanks for bringing it up, Nan. So that day I was, I don't usually get starstruck. At, um, like there's, like I haven't met De Niro yet. I would probably get stupid tongue tied if I, but uh, Gord Downey specifically in the hip yeah. is like a big, big thing for me. And, um, and so that day was like uh, incredible. Like we literally had our own performance of the hip. It was unbelievable. And though all those guys were just, just top notch guys. They were first so thing nice. in the morning, just playing for us. Oh, yeah, that was awesome. And, mm. and yeah. like everybody, the whole crew cast, everybody were just all God smacked when they were there. And like when we were done shooting, everybody was like surrounding them. And, and so I didn't really get a chance other than being in the scene to kind of talk to any of them. And, and I get a bit shy. So I kind of stuck at the back. And after we shot that scene, I was signing out and they were leaving in a van and the van was backing up. And um, I signed out with Rusty and then I, I kind of, and you know, I could see them driving out and then the van stopped and pulled forward again. And I'm getting a bit choked up. At <laughs> and uh, the door slides open and Gord down, he gets out and he comes up to me and he just says, well, Hey, I didn't, you know, we didn't get to say, Hey, a little bit there. I just wanted to say, Hey, we're... so we had like this 10 minute conversation. Maybe it was a bit longer and they were going on tour and Teresa and I were doing our cross Canada trip and, and so we were talking about that and he's like, well, maybe we'll, we'll cross paths, you know, and we can have a beer. And I'm like, Oh yeah. That'd be like, you know, but it didn't happen. Okay. But anyway, that was like one of the biggest uh, uh, moments of my, like yeah. my life that they were so great. Oh, so yeah. gracious. So nice. 
And, um, and they were like that morning, remember, like we were saying when they were playing, they were just playing because that's what they were doing. They weren't doing it to say, oh, look at us, we're playing. It's just that that's how they were yeah, they spending their play. time, waiting for everything to be set up and the lighting and everything. And we're just like, this is unbelievable. We're just sitting by their feet listening to them. Oh, how cool. I, yeah. And I got to meet uh, Colin James. I'm a big fan of Colin James. Yeah, so I got to watch him uh, steal the gas. And then and then we had a chat afterwards, <laughs> and he signed up a, a, a CD for me and everything. It was, a, it was an awesome day. Sweet. We asked uh, fans of the show, people who uh, follow us, uh, our social media accounts at Corner Gas, to uh, write in some questions. And I know, Kareen, because you have, you're in production, we have you for a limited time. You're going to have to bolt. Oh. So I wanted to make sure that we, uh, we uh, got uh, you to answer the question that was sent in for you. Oh, we okay. Lose. I would love to. This comes to us from uh, Sarah via Twitter. She asks, Kareen, how does your extensive theater background where you always have a live audience, influence your voice acting when you're alone in a booth? Oh, that's a really good question. Mark? Um, gosh, I, I don't know. I would, I would say uh, probably because the, um, the size um, performance in theater um, works really well with animation. I mean, you're, you're um, trying to communicate uh, all the way to Vancouver or with your company in Toronto and it's, it's larger than life animation. And uh, it's so much fun. It's, it's, the, 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 there's a lot in common between, I think, stage and vocal performance on animation. Why do I have to do your stupid play? You just have to talk about pioneer life. It's all in the script. <sighs> a day in the life of a pioneer with Jane T. Wright. Why does that name sound familiar? One of our cast members missing the late great Janet Wright, who we all love. Let's just quickly, since we all have a beverage, I think we all have a beverage. <clears throat> Quick toast to Janet, our, our one and only missing cohort, a legend. To Janet. To Janet. To Janet. 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 We miss you. One of the reasons uh, that we cast you in the part, Corinne, is because you were recommended by Janet's husband, Bruce, um, for and us to look at. Honor. Uh, because you and Janet, you know Janet, or you knew Janet from the theater world, right? You were old friends. Yeah. Well, I saw her on stage when I first moved to Vancouver when I was an acting student. I um, saw Janet on stage a lot, and she was fierce. She was, th there was a production called The Club with Beth Kaplan, Janet Wright, and it was, they were playing men in an old Victorian men's nightclub. And then at the end, they would take off their wigs and Janet Wright had this, you know, incredible mane of um, dark red hair. And she played the, the most um, <laughs> unbelievably arrogant fellow. And, and she was so amazing. I remember just thinking as a young actor, like, I want to do that. I would kind of just, you know, follow her around. And she was directing, she directed this amazing amazing, hilarious musical called Mabel Leaves Forever. I saw it 17 times. Oh. And I would always <laughs> hope she was there. And when she was, I would just, I was such a fan. I would just say, I just love everything you do. And I, you know, and she would just like, knock it off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <That> was, <laughs> but I was such a fan. And then years later, we did a production of the club. I played her part and she directed it. That oh, was pretty cool. So it was like a full circle and it was just no. unbelievable. I miss her and boy, she was in, um, just made Canadian theater and Canadian television and everything better, you know. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, season three. Let's raise a lot of money for that food bank and I love you all very much. Oh, we love you. All right, you. take care. We'll talk to you soon, Corinne. Bye, my loves. Bye. Take care Bye. of yourselves. Stay safe. All right, we're going to dive into some questions. Right. Uh, you guys are okay with that? Sure. All right, let's do it. And then we'll, uh, after the questions, we'll show another uh, clip from live action before we get it into the animated. Gabe, Teresa, via Instagram, Teresa has asked, uh -huh. do you think that Lacey would ever go back to the big city? Uh, what do you think she misses about her life in the city when she's there in Dog River? I think Lacey might go back to the city to visit, but I don't think that she would go back permanently. I think she's now pretty entrenched in her life in Dog River. One of us. She misses being able to have more 
choices in eating out and shopping, <laughs> I would think. Maybe that might be the thing she misses about the big city. Only uh, The only restaurant in town there. Sick of her own cooking. <laughs> Sick of her own cooking. Hey, Freddie. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah. Finding Zen is the person asking your question oh, I was from Instagram. <laughs> You're going to ask me about finding Zen. How do you find your Zen? Wrong guy. What's your Zen, Fred? No. Uh, f- uh, via Instagram, a user named uh, Finding Zen asks, what are your uh, influences in comedy? What were your comedic influences? Aside from so, me, so, don't just say Yeah, how I know, you. I know. That's, you know. Um, it's weird because I don't consider myself a comedian, but whenever I do, like, interviews or stuff they they go they're always like oh so you know you're a as well, I, I was just an actor that was goofy enough that kept getting comedic parts um you're but, naturally very funny though you're well i think i'm just funny looking i think i'm just good at reading what people write like it, what you do it, and and not i'm not trying to blow smoke but um i because there was a point where i thought i i wanted to be a comedian it was because of robin williams it was because of mork and mindy and Mork and Mindy introduced me to Robin Williams, which made me go down the Robin Williams rabbit hole. He was an influence because it, it got me thinking about entertainment. Like that, he was the first person and the first reason why I started thinking about entertainment. <laughs> you could do a lot worse for influences than Robin Williams. Nancy, um, your question comes via Twitter from Tisha. Tisha asks... Besides Corner Gas, what role have you played over the years that's really stuck with you? Maybe the the, the Dormouse in uh, Sci-Fi's Alice, because the transformation they had to do, they, they cast me and uh, it was supposed to be for another character. And the director said, I think I want to make you uh, the Dormouse, which, so I had to be a male. So I had to go through this whole transformation of, you know, the, the prosthetics and, uh, and the wardrobe uh, that was fit for me was so cool. It was from the, uh, the Academy Award winning uh, wardrobe from Moulin Rouge. And so he fit this beautiful tweed suit on me and, and, uh, and you know, I had sideburns and I realized how much I really did look like my dad. <laughs> <laughs> which was kind of freaky and um my sister and brother couldn't look at the pictures of the because they had to take the photos and everything it just freaked them out eric ian from facebook asks, and this is kind of a two-parter so i'll, I'll give you uh i'll do the first part we, you can answer that and then if we'll i get it wrong part. the first part i don't get the second part. <laughs> that's right high okay. stakes how many times would you say ballpark uh, have you been asked to call someone a jackass in real life and, and you feel bad about it? I've uh, I have a small book here of all the times I keep track of it. I do. There's a <laughs> uh, let's see. Now we're September the twentieth. Let me just get that page. Oh yeah, here we are now. The total as of what time is it now? It's about two o'clock in the afternoon or whatever. The time now is seven thousand three hundred and sixty-two. Point eight. <laughs> wow. How does that, how does that fraction come point eight, Well, that's the children, of course. I don't okay. give a full kind of credit. Of a child, now a point eight would be an eight-year-old child. Does that include the amount of people that didn't ask to be called a jackass? <laughs> <laughs> totally just, different book. It's a bigger you know, book. Jackass, 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 jackass. <laughs> Again, no, it's no. mostly airline related. Yeah, no, no. Yes, yeah, you jackass. Well, I wouldn't let my kid hang out with your jackass kid because your kid has a jackass for a father and comes from a long line of jackasses. You can't insult my whole family like that. Your whole jackass family. Do you like being associated with with uh, such a kind of, you know, um, iconic Horrible character? <laughs> a phrase. I am nice. deeply honored when somebody asks me to call them a jacket <laughs> because of the show. No, I am, I'm serious about it. It's just lovely to know that, you know, that kind of audience connection. And in this country, it's just tremendous. This yeah. is a good time to jump in and just remind people if you're able to, we're raising funds here for the food banks. So you can help your folk, local food bank or your focal lewd bank, your local <laughs> food bank by clicking on the uh, description below. And if you, any contribution that you make, we're going to uh, match it here for Corner Gas. So it'll help raise uh, funds for the food bank. Here's the second part of your question, Eric. Okay. If Oscar's slogan is jackass, what is Eric's real life slogan? I think that my real life slogan is 
soon it will be bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> the mantra, something to look forward to. Yeah, no, 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 it is. So that when things, I'd like to put that out, especially in these troubled times, just think, Soon it will be <laughs> and you, We can rest and have a little relief, but make a donation first too, because you'll sleep happy and content that you really, you know, an act of kindness. And God knows this is what we need to be doing in this, right at this time. If we ever needed human to human kindness, it's right now, eh? Mm, that's for sure. Tara, I have a question to you from uh, a fellow by the name of Donnie on Twitter. You know, you know, Donnie over there on Twitter. <laughs> I like it. Donnie from Twitter asks, it's like a town. Yeah. Are you, are you from the uh, Twitter Donnies? <laughs> um, the question is, if you could have your character do anything in animation, what would it be? Family, family show, family show. <laughs> Karen is secretly um, a cheerleader for... <laughs> the Rough Riders and like she has this like secret life of like a cheerleader for the Rough Riders. Animated, I think it would be much easier to do. We can see if we can make that happen. You thought I was gonna say that I could fly. <laughs> well, yeah. maybe we'll, I, maybe we'll have it, they, they, uh, when you're a cheerleader, they throw you up into the sky and you just never come down. <laughs> just keeps going. Lauren, I have yes. a question for you from uh, Mark. Again, via Twitter. Oh, yes. Do you record together when there isn't a pandemic going on? We touched a little bit on this. If not, how do you maintain the same, the same chemistry and natural feel? Um, again, much like Tara, I can hear Tara's voice and most of the other cast members. So if, I'm, if, uh, if circumstances dictate that I have to record my lines alone, I hear them in my head. So I know exactly how to set something up or how to come through on a punchline or how to deliver the flat. So it's all just um, just from experience and memory. I, I, I hear them all up in here. There's a question here for me too. I'll ask myself the, the question. Jane from Facebook asks, how does writing animation differ from writing live action? Do you have a preference? Well, for the most part, it doesn't. Jane from Facebook, for the most part, it doesn't. And I, I'll, I'll tell you this, um, we, like we talked a little bit about how we're able to expand and do some of the different things in the, in the fantasy dream sequences that we couldn't do in real life, just because of the scope of doing something physically and the cost of it. One of the guys who wrote on Corner Gas is a fellow named Norm Hiscock, very funny uh, TV writer, very funny guy, Norm Hiscock. He wrote on Corner Gas, but he also wrote on King of the Hill. So I thought, well, here's a guy who understands our show and he understands Adult Network primetime animation. So I went over to Norm and I said, listen, uh, we're thinking about doing animated Corner Gas. How would we do it differently? How would we write things differently? He said, you wouldn't do anything different. Just, he said, this is the perfect show to animate. Just write more episodes. It'll translate perfectly. So that kind of, that encouragement from Norm emboldened us and he, he uh, worked with us to help. You'll still see his name in the credits of Corner Gas Animated. He's got a development consultant. He helped us uh, figure it out. One of the things that we dealt with on the show, Corner Gas, was uh, our happy place. What's, uh, people are asking what each of your happy places. Where do you find bliss? I definitely find bliss in um, our garden, in the Kootenays, and um, hiking and biking and walking where we have a home um, near the Valhalla Wilderness. It's beautiful. And this year we spent a lot of time gardening. We grew our own food. My husband, Alex, and I canned uh, tomatoes. Mm. Canning some beans this mm. week. So that's for me, that's my happy place being with my family. Fred, how about you? What's your happy place? Um, I'm pretty lucky. I got a lot of happy places, but um, the, it, I have to say it's a tie between uh, being in front of a plate of pierogies <laughs> and uh, being mm. in the crease playing, playing goal. If there was a way to combine those two oh, things, wouldn't that be baby. Awesome? Now, Instead of a water bottle, if as a goalie, you could have a plate of pierogies but on the top of the, you know <laughs> the what I mean? Like, comes up. Yeah, rough, rough. Hey, 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 hey. Tara, uh, what about you? What's your, where do you get your bliss? Where's your happy place? I'm like Fred. I have quite a few happy places. Um, obviously with my family and spending time with them, but I would say out for a run is a very happy place for me. It's very meditative and quiet. Oh, you you took mine. <laughs> <laughs> Especially during COVID, it was nice to have somewhere to go that my children weren't. 
although I love my children, <laughs> they are very much my happy place. Um, being locked in a house with them 24 seven, it was nice to go for a run and just get out and sort things out in my brain. And I would say my other happy place is in bed. <laughs> Not like that. Just Family like, show. I like sleeping. I like being yeah. Yeah. It's hard to beat it. And soon, as Eric pointed out, soon it will be time for bed. <laughs> Eric, what's your uh, happy place? We're in the, you know, we're in the maritime bubble here. I just miss being in my, you know, real life. And I'm happy to have the work and everything. And I should say, working out here, every one of you, I have had crew members go, oh, do you know, what about, you know, when, you know, you've all worked out here, right? And they yeah. speak so highly of you. And I keep going, I, I guess my experience of them has been totally different. But they <laughs> <laughs> You've seen the real us. Talking about the same threat. I say, <laughs> you know, no, no, they do. And everybody has said, you know, how much they uh, yeah, enjoyed uh, working with you. I, at my happy place, I guess, is, yeah, <laughs> going to bed, getting in. <laughs> Nancy, what's uh, your, your happy place? The same type of thing that everybody said, like the home and, and, uh, and everything like that. Home feels pretty safe these days. Uh, mine is, is when I... Uh, can get out and go for my walks because it makes life feel a little bit normal and I feel not as trapped. I don't know, try to look at nice things like the trees while I'm sitting out and stuff. I'm, it's, it's kind of a sentimental time. You kind of start looking at things a little bit differently and appreciate them a little bit more and, you know, and uh, uh, so yeah, just out in nature, I think. And that's odd for me. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, how about you? What's your uh, happy place? Where do you find your happiness? I like uh, actually uh, going for walks with the, the wife and the pooch. We like to go down by the river and walk by there and just, you know, take a breath, take a, a calming breath and enjoy just hearing the river and seeing the birds and the eagles and, uh, and staying socially distant from people who come up and go, are you that guy from that show? <laughs> <laughs> question comment from somebody on Facebook and it, it leads us into uh, something. So I just wanted to share this because I thought it was very nice. It was Dan on Facebook said, do you have any idea whatsoever how much joy you have given to so many, particularly those who have battled clinical depression and anxiety for some, each of you has been a lifesaver and a respite from threatening and stormy seas of desolation and despair. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One and all that's, I love hearing stuff like that. When pe people say that the show has, um, you know, touched them or got them through a difficult time, you've probably all heard people say things to you like that. Absolutely, and it's 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 incredible to be a part of part of this show that brings that much joy to people, and uh, I'm gr I'm grateful for it. And it's so fantastic that we're able to get back together and do this new version of the show, animated version of the show. Um, I have a clip for uh, people out there who uh, are looking forward. Here's a clip. This is like a little teaser clip from season three uh, of uh, Corner Gas Animated, which starts on CTV Comedy Network, uh, CTV Comedy Channel. It premieres October 12th. In this uh, clip from season three anime, we get to uh, revisit Thunderface. Oh. One, two, one, two, three, four. Tonight is going to be... Epic! I'm going to the bar. Nobody understands me. My dad is a total grouch. Hey! Sometimes I think people in this town like my mom's bread more than they like me. I can't wait till I grow up and... Hang on. I'm 40. Is that arcade fire? We're getting a free dinner with this gig, right? Holy mother of muscle mania! Lance Fury? The greatest wrestler of all time! Fury, you're dead! Hello? It's Mr. Cahill from Red Rip Lick. Been working here 30 years, I still can't say that. Red Whip Licorice. I won't sneeze at wealth? Who wrote this? I can't thank you enough for bringing me and Kyle into your home. Let us know if there's any way we can repay you. This is exactly how I imagined it happening. Don't forget to wish your father a happy birthday from both of us. <laughs> Aww. Yeah. Break into corner gas. We'll have a few laughs. Yeah. Oof. Ugh. Corner gas. Nah.
Nice. Uh, I would watch nice. that show. You're fabulous. Yeah, I gotta give it a try. Sure. <laughs> that seems like a good show. Well, this has been uh, a lot of fun, you guys, getting together. And, uh, you know, we did this once, uh, just us for fun to get together via Zoom, but it was kind of nice yeah. to get back, touch base, revisit mm-hmm. some memories about the old show. Aww. And, uh, you know, look forward to many more seasons of the animated because I'm, uh, you know, speaking for myself, having a blast making the show. I want to make Dan from Facebook happy so we can continue to do things that make him less blue. Yeah. Yes, exactly. From your lips to, uh, to the leave button. We're going to start ending here. We're going to start wrapping things up. I'm going to say so long to everybody. Thanks for making the time to uh, touch base with the, the Corner Gas fans. Gabe, I hope you enjoy your garden some more. Thank you. I love you guys so much. Love you, Gabe. I love you, Gabe. And I love um, all of the people that support our show and watch it. And I'm sending you all big snuggles. Freddie? Yeah. Oh, me? Great all to right. see you. Uh, I'll, I'll look for you out in the ice. So long. Farewell. <laughs> <laughs> we can't license this song. We can't license. <laughs> yeah, thanks, guys, um, and thanks to all the fans, people that tune in and, and, and love the show. Uh, it's been, uh, it's, you know, it's been a blessing to be a part of it. And so, thanks, Brent, and everybody else. I love you guys. Eric, sir, always such a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, stay safe out there in the bubble. Hey, yep, I will stay safe. Thanks for this. This has been great. <laughs> Lovely to see everybody. And, and anybody else who's watching this. And the food bank, remember the food bank, come on. Yeah. Lauren, great to see not you. Living. He's just oh, not leaving. He's just not leaving. You have to, you have to do oh, the I'm leaving. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm yeah, sorry, I do. thought you were doing that. Okay, here it capacity. is. Okay, let's try that again. So I don't, it will be I'm not there. going to leave, yeah. I'm staying. <laughs> I don't want to leave, don't make me leave, don't go. I've already got my cursor on the leaf. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, uh, great to see you. All, all yes. the best. We'll be Thanks very much soon. for pulling us all together. It's been great to see yeah. everybody again. And don't forget to donate to your local food bank. You said Love it. you guys. And thank you, fans out there. Uh, we'll see you down the road. Bye, everybody. Tara. Uh, Finally, they're all gone. Now we <laughs> Come can on, talk. get the booze. <laughs> <laughs> Crank the tunes. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> It was great to see you. I wish we could see you in person. I, wish I know. Give you I miss big, you guys. Big old hug. I miss you guys. Um, thank you for doing this, and thank you to the fans. We love you, and this wouldn't exist without you and you, friend. You and them. Love, love you, you too. Bye. Talk to you soon. We'll leave meeting. <laughs> and now it's just us. We'll see you uh, shortly, Nance. Now you're going to have to tell me how do I get off of this thing. There should be a red button that says "end" or "leave uh, meeting." Leave. One of those. Okay, I'm terribly fond of you. I'm going now. I just think we're just so fortunate to have the best group of people that watch the show, and and I want everybody to stay safe and healthy, and um, go sit in your happy happy place and be happy. Nice. Okay, bye. Nice. I'm sending okay. you all kisses, not rude ones. <laughs> no, there, chicken. Now it's just now it's just us. Uh, I want to echo the sentiments of uh, my castmates who uh, said thanks to everybody for watching and uh, watching this video and watching the uh, Corner Gas throughout the years, live action and now animated and the feature film when it came out. Um, Season three of Corner Gas Animated makes its uh, debut on CTV Comedy um, October 12th. For time, check your local listings. um, But October 12th, hunker down with friends and family. Spread the word. You can really help us out if you tell um, everybody you know. October 12th is when the, uh, the show premieres, season three premieres. Also uh, on uh, CTV Comedy, that day, October 12th, when season three premieres, they're going to be showing a marathon. You can get all caught up. Season one and two of Corner Gas Animated on October 12th on CTV Comedy, season one and two, leading up to the premiere of uh, season three. You're making a big uh, uh, Corner Gas Animated marathon uh, day. We are raising money here with this video for the uh, food bank, so you can help support your local food bank by clicking on the uh, link down below and making a donation if you're able to, and we're going to uh, match that donation up to a maximum of $10,000. To our friends, anybody watching uh, South, 
of the Canada US border. So the US folks, our American viewers, we haven't uh, forgotten about you. Of course, season one and two is available. Se season one and two of Corner Gas Animated is available on IMDb TV uh, via Prime or via, via an IMDb TV account. And we hope to have word about season three coming your way very soon. So stay tuned. You can either follow Corner Gas uh, on the socials or follow me, Brent Butt. So uh, again, just to reiterate what everybody said, thank you all for watching the show over the years. Uh, it means the world to us. Couldn't be more appreciative. So thanks for everything you've done all the years and, and continue to do. And our friends who've been, fans who've been with us from the beginning and, and new fans who are just getting on board now. Thank you for watching Corner Gas and thanks for watching this video. Hope it was kind of fun, not too weird. If it, if it was a little weird, that's all right. Nothing wrong with a little weirdness. We'll be seeing you all soon. Uh, don't forget to watch the premiere October 12th, CTV Comedy. Here's me looking for the end button. Talk to you soon.